Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. Thank you so much for watching my video. Hey, if you could give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends so others can come hang out with us. Know that I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. On Thursdays, I have a pre-recorded live premiere journal video that usually comes up around 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time so you can hang out in the chat with me. So I hope you'll join me. Do check the description box below for links to all my social media connectors as well as the links to the products that I'm using today. So today I'm going to make a couple of greeting cards for you. I'm going to show you some stamping and embossing. So let me get everything ready. We'll make two different cards. So to start with, I have the Dear Santa rubber stamp and I have a piece of ivory cardstock that is just slightly larger than the Dear Santa stamp. Let's ink it up with black archival, jet black archival ink. I've got it mounted to an acrylic block and I'm just gonna ink this up and then try to get it somewhat in the center of this rectangle and give firm, even pressure all the way around. You leave it longer on the piece of paper and the ink can transfer. If you do it really quick, you may not get a good ink transfer. Now that I've stamped that, what I wanna do is tear it out. So I'm just gonna go right around the edge and then just loosely tear the edges. I have a book page that I want to use as well, and I think what I want to do is just trim this to fit onto my foundation card, which is a five and a half inch tall by four and a half, four and a quarter inch wide. Now mine's just a single layer. You could put this on a folded card if you so choose. I want this to be a journal card in that will just write on the back side. So if I look at this, I want this piece to basically mat the other one and I'll just grab a ruler and then come in here about that far away so I can kind of see and then just rip that. But I want to change the color of this piece of paper. It's going to be a stark contrast, but if you put the white on white, it just kind of blends together. So let's make this red. And how I'm gonna do that is with a paintbrush and Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist. So I've got the, well, I don't want this one. No, I want this one. I want the Christmas Berry. This is from the Tattered Angel's add-on for the Christmas Dream. And there's mica in here. So I wanna make sure that I shake this up really well. Then I'm gonna take the lid off and hold on to it firmly so it doesn't fall over. You could spray some of the Tattered Angels into a container and then dip your paintbrush, but this is just as quick for me. And I'll go right around that edge on all four sides, adding just a little bit of a border of red. This is a quick way to change the color of a piece of paper, especially if it's just going to be a small amount of it showing and you don't waste any product by spraying the whole piece of paper. And I'm pretty confident that I've got enough on here. I'm just gonna test. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'll put my paintbrush in some water, put the lid back on, then I'll use my heat tool to dry this piece of paper really fast. Now that that's dry and I have my torn piece ready, I'll go ahead and go around the edges. I'm using Walnut Stain Distress Ink and the Ranger Blending Tool. And I'll just go right over this edge, which kind of gives it a little vintage aged look. And I'll do the same with the painted piece. All right, let's layer these together. So what I'm gonna do is glue down the piece that has the red border onto my green piece of cardstock. Now I do plan to go to the sewing machine, so I'm not really going to concentrate on getting those edges adhered down. But if you're not going to sew, you'll want to make sure that you put a generous amount of glue all the way to the edge. I'm gonna use my bone folder to help smooth this out. And I'm just using Aline's Tacky Glue. I like that it's an inexpensive glue. It dries relatively quickly. It is a glue that if I want, I can add just a little bit of water to it to thin it. So it's easy to squeeze out. I'll set this aside for a moment and let that glue dry. And then we'll go over to the sewing machine. Let's make the other card. 
So this piece is five and a quarter by four inches wide in size. Let me grab a scrap of paper. And then I have this, I think it's tree line. You know, I should have looked it up before I got on here. The other one was Dear Santa. So this one, I think it's tree. I'll look it up. Tree line. I was correct. All right. So this is tree line and we're going to emboss this. So I'm going to use my Versamark ink pad and ink across the whole image. And then I want to stamp this not all the way up, but leaving just a little bit of a, a space at the bottom and try to get it straight across my page. And then I have Merry Christmas. And this is from the, I'm trying to remember if this is from the Holiday Greetings Quartet. And I'll ink this up and stamp it just below the tree line. And now I'm going to use some gold glitter embossing powder. It's just something that I've had for a long time. So any embossing powder that you like using, pick it up, use it, have fun with it. I'm just tapping off any excess. So that's what it looks like before we heat it. Close your embossing powder so you don't end up with it everywhere. All right, so I'm going to use my heat tool and we're going to heat emboss this. Whenever you're doing heat embossing, you want to make sure that your face isn't right over it because you don't want to breathe in the fumes or particles. I don't care what brand it is. I think they all have something in them that you really shouldn't be breathing. If you're going to do a lot of embossing, you might wear a mask to uh, prevent those particles from going down. As you move the heat tool back and forth, you'll start to see that it changes so see how it's changing from more of a dull look and it's a little bit more shiny got that sparkle going you don't want to touch embossing right after you finish heating it you want it to cool for a moment because it can burn and i think i want to add a little bit of an element so i've got some fibers here there you get fibers inside the christmas dream kit and this is what was left over so i'm using it to demonstrate how you can use them so i'm going to wrap this around and then tie a little bow across the top portion of this card kind of adjust it a little bit and then trim off any excess and then let's glue that onto our foundation and then we'll go to the sewing machine. All right, let's go over to the sewing machine. We'll sew the Dear Santa and then we'll sew the tree line. All right, so I'm over at my sewing machine and I have regular thread, a regular needle in the machine. I've got a set for a zigzag stitch. On mine, it's electronic, so I have it set for a two and two. So it's a little bit narrow of a zigzag stitch. It's not super wide. Set it whatever your machine has and what you enjoy. And we're just going to start sewing around where the red is. So I'm going to start in the corner and then stitch down one side. And since I'm working with a rectangle, when I get to the end here, I'm going to leave the needle down, but raise the presser fit and then rotate my card and then I'll stitch down this side and I'll repeat that all the way around. So that's been stitched all the way around and let's get the other card. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'll start in the corner and go all the way around. And now this card has been stitched all the way around. All right, so we're back at our workstation here. And as you can see, I've made two little journal cards or greeting cards. Now these could also be covers for journals. You can make these into mini journals. You can use these as tuck spots. You could, or uh, a tuck, a card in a tuck spot <laughs> or a pocket. You know, you could make this into a greeting card and send it to someone. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing a quick way to make a couple of cards to pop in your journal or pop in an envelope and send to a friend. Give this video a thumbs up again if you liked it. Share it with your friends. And of course, come back and watch me live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. And then again on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. And then make sure you hit that notification bell when you subscribe so that you get notifications the next time I have a video loaded. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fabulous day. Bye.